I want to talk this morning from this subject. I'm going to deal with finding comfort in being chosen. Finding comfort in being chosen. First Peter 2 verse number 9 again it says, but you are a chosen people, royal priesthood, a holy nation. In this translation or transliteration it says God's special possessions in the King James it says a peculiar people that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into this marvelous light. Amen. So again, with that being in your minds, I want to talk about finding comfort. Somebody say finding comfort in being chosen. In, in this world that we live in today, especially, a lot of people are looking for comfort. And when I speak in terms of people looking for comfort, what I'm simply saying is people are looking for something that's going to soothe them. People want to be soothed. Yes. Yes. I mean, in many different areas, it could be in the area of finances, people want to be soothed in that areas. Come comfort. Going through a distressful moment, financially speaking, I need something to soothe me. When it comes to a person's health or the condition of a person's health, they're looking for something to come alongside of them and comfort them. Because they're going through some health challenges. I would think it's only right for somebody to look for comfort, especially when you're going through a situation because I know even me, being honest with you. Oh I'm looking for something to comfort me. Yes, sir. Of course, being a bit mature in the things of God, I know that if there's going to be, as Paul stated, any consolation, if there's going to be anything yes, yes. that's going to bring about comfort in my life, yes. my comfort is going to come from God. Amen? Yes. My comfort is going to come from God. Because there are times I love my wonderful wife. We've been married 29 years. There are times that I'd like for her to comfort me. But at the end of the day, the level of comfort that she can bring my way is not going to meet my need. And I'm sure there were times in her life that she would like for me to be able to comfort her in some area of emotional distress that she's going through, but because of the fact that I'm limited as to what amount of comfort I can give to her, it's not happening. Are y'all with me? People look for many things to cheer them up. Many people want to be happy. Nothing wrong with being happy. Nothing wrong with having a lot of, you know, gladness in your life. Can I be real with the church this morning? Is that okay? There's nothing at all wrong with, you know, having this level of happiness in your life. But one thing I found out about happiness is that happiness, being happy, is predicated upon circumstances and conditions. In other words, if the circumstance is right, I'm happy about it. If the condition is right, I'm happy about it. Then I found out the same thing that brought me happiness ended up bringing us sadness. And what? A, a person has to come to a point in their life where they are willing to deal with, somebody say balance. Because you're going to have some good days. You're going to have a lot of lonely days. You're going to have a lot of days filled with sorrow. 
And you still will desire that comfort. Yeah. Am I right, somebody? Yeah. It is stated that depression, anxiety, bipolar disorders affect 1.5% of the population that's out here today. 3.3 million Americans suffer with either depression, anxiety, and bipolar disorders. Happy one moment, down the next moment. And that even comes to people in Christianity. Many people in the church Although we know the things of the Lord, many people in church, they have all these issues when it comes to anxiety. Anxious about things when the Bible says that we need to be anxious for nothing. Up and down because of life situations, we find ourselves rising to peaks, then find ourselves diving into a valley. We find ourselves being anxious over all kinds of things, happy about this and then sad about the same thing that you were originally happy about. Am I talking to anybody in the house? And we find ourselves going through all these peaks and valleys in life, all these peaks and ups and downs of life, and all these things grabbing at us and pulling at us, and we're trying to find something to comfort us. Can anything around me bring me any kind of comfort? So many times because we're looking for these things to bring us comfort, one of the things we turn to is entertainment. We go to the movies, we go to the, the club, we go to the, the, the bar, we go to all these different places trying to find some level of comfort. Yes, some of us like to dine out and we like to, you know, be in that, that atmosphere. Man, it's a cozy place, it's a nice place and we, we eat a lot. Because we're trying to find that level of comfort. Am I talking right? Oh, yeah. and this is the reason why Houston have the majority, most more and more restaurants are in Houston, Texas than any other city in the United States of America. Did y'all know that? We got some restaurants. We don't ever have to be concerned about a place to eat. And we got some of the best restaurants. We're looking for comfort. Many people, because they, they're not satisfied, I'm just going to be real, with the mate that they have, they find themselves leaving the one that they're with to find comfort in somebody else. I love being real. Is that okay, somebody? Yeah. Because we are not comfortable, we are not satisfied. We need to have somebody else to comfort us. Women are looking for some other man to bring them comfort. They may be single, but they're looking for a man to bring them comfort. Men are looking for uh, another, uh, hopefully, uh, another um, female. <laughs> But we may stop today. Jesus already told us we are living in a backwards and a perverse generation. People don't even believe that. So they, some, some folks are looking for comfort from the same sex. Lord have mercy. I ain't not going to mess with that. Y'all figure that stuff out yourselves. Morning. You make it real up in here. The truth should make you free. Come on, give me a praise. Give me a praise. But, but people are looking for comfort from all kinds of areas. Man, do I want to be comfortable? Yes. Bishop Clark wants to be comfortable. I want comfort in my life. Because you just get tired. 
of y'all get tired? Just get tired of life, get tired of the mundane of life, get tired of all the issues of life, get tired of all the stresses of life, get tired of the people that's in this life, get tired of your president that's in this life. I mean, just get tired. Just get tired. And you want some comfort. Jesus helps us. In John, the 16th chapter, verse number 33, speaking the truth, Jesus says, in the latter clause, in this world, you shall have tribulation, but I've overcome the world. So here is the thing that blesses the people of God, the people that study God's word, the blessing is, no matter how much you look for comfort, the truth of the matter is, you're going to find trials. You're going to have tribulation. You're going to go through some stuff. You're going to have some problems in your life. You're going to deal with some things that you don't want to deal with. In this world, you shall have tribulation. You're going to have a lot of trials. The good news is, Jesus says, I overcame this world. Now, the only way to be an overcomer of this world, you got to do the things that he did and do whatever he wants you to do to be an overcomer. Can somebody say praise the Lord? That's the only way we're going to get through this thing the right, right way. Amen? So when we come to our message this morning, finding comfort in being chosen, have you ever considered and thought about the fact that God chose you, number one? And have you thought about in detail as to how powerful just that alone is when a person realized that Jesus the Christ decided to choose him or her? He chose you. When someone chooses another, they select somebody over and above someone else. I chose my wife to be my wife. I didn't choose somebody else. I chose her to be my wife. She chose me. Because it has to be a give and a take. A give and a take. A handoff, if you will. He chooses me. Talk about Jesus. I got to choose him. That might pose a problem. Because he can choose me all he wants to, but if I decide not to in return choose him, then we got some problems. Because one person has chosen me, but then now the one that chose me, I don't want nothing to do what? Do with him. Problems. And this is the reason why so many people don't find comfort in the one that chose them. Because really, I know you chose me, but I don't like you that much. Not to the point where I'm willing to do those things that you want me to do. I know that you were looking out for my best interest. I know that you're concerned about me. I know that you really want the best for me, but I don't like you that much. And you can always tell, even in the natural, when a person really don't like you that much because you cannot separate a person's actions from a person's responses. If in my action I show you that I love you, you'll respond to me. If I love you this way, you should respond properly. Are y'all here, church? And so a lot of times, because of the fact that we, 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 we know that this person liked us, I know that she loved me, I know that he loved me, but I'm not going to, you know, sometimes we play hard to get. And the one that you don't play hard to get with is Jesus. When he chooses you, you want to hurry up and fall in love with him. Come on, come on, you don't have enough courage, is it all right? It's going to be okay, shake yourself, and it's going to be okay, everybody. We're going to get through this. He tells them, hey, we're going to get through this together. And so a lot of times what begins happening to us, church, is Jesus decides to choose us. Everybody else, he skips over somebody. He skips over another person. He says, I want you, I want you, I want you. Many are called, but only a few are chosen. I'm only getting the people that I really want to be a part of this, this body. 
Because my body is unique. My body is selective. My body is powerful. My body is strong. My body, I can have stuff in my body that I don't want in my body. So I choose what I want in my Come on, y'all. Y'all here? You don't have church. It's going to be all right. I'm just feeling it today. So here it is, church. The thing is, the Lord decided to choose us. Somebody, somebody say, He chose me. I didn't choose myself. He chose me. I didn't have anything at all to do with him choosing me. You did not have anything at all to do with him selecting you. He just decided one day in an infinite wisdom to say, I want her. I want him. I want them. I want them all. Praise the Lord. Now, what you going to do about it? Trouble begins then because there are other things in our life that we choose outside of Christ, which becomes problematic in our relationship. choosing something outside of Christ, praise the Lord, and he's already chosen me. Anything that gets in between the relationship calls the relationship to be straight. And a lot of people don't understand why they don't have that level of joy. Uh -huh. Straight in a relationship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why don't I have that peace? You're straight in the relationship. Why don't I have that happiness in my walk with Christ? You're straining the relationship. Most people divorce way before they go to divorce court. They might live in a house with each other, but way before then. Because the relationship was already strained, the level of comfort that they originally had had been strained. We don't really have a relationship. Many Christians strain the relationship. You make it harder. This is why Jesus says it's very hard, Paul. In this relationship between yourself and me, for you to keep on kicking against a prick. That particular picture is like a man kicking with his bare feet. And a stone with all fierceness. With all fierceness, he's kicking at a stone. Open toes. And here you are straining a relationship. It's hard for you to keep doing that. You find yourself doing that when you're not submissive to the call of Christ to the cause of Christ. You find yourself doing those things when you're not willing to humble yourself. It becomes hard. It becomes rigorous. I can't submit to that. I can't do those things that he, you're kicking against something that's not going anywhere. He's in a relationship with you. Are y'all here? When we are called and we know that we've been chosen mm -hmm. there are three things that you need to be aware of three comforts if you will three comforts somebody say three comforts three comforts you must find your comfort in your calling you have to find your comfort in your calling why because you've been chosen again people try to find comfort in everything else Boyfriend, girlfriend, careers, money, dollar bill, y'all, dollar bill. I mean, that thing that really got folk tied all the way up. That's why he said, no man can serve two masters for you to love one and gonna hate the other. Are y'all here? And so, 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 but you've got to find comfort in your calling. What he called me, the Bible said, when he calls us, church, he doesn't call us like mama and daddy calls us. But he calls us, the Bible says, with a holy calling. All right. yeah. Now, if it's a holy calling, there should be a separation between those things that are holy and those things that are not holy. So somewhere along the line, if something outside of holiness is calling you, you can't allow your ear to be 
be so tuned in that it draws you towards it. You got to be drawn towards him. The one that called you with the holy calling. Does that make sense? Because everything about his attributes, everything about who he is, he's holy. And I understand that we live in a very blurred situation today where people don't like to deal with Christ being on the, made based on the fact that he's holy. He's holy. He will never come to a point in his eternal state of being to show that he's not holy. He is holy, so he says, be ye holy, for the Lord your God is holy. Amen. Somebody might say, well, that's some antiquated preaching. But he's still the same. Yes. Yesterday, today, and for it. He's still looking for holiness, church. All right. All right. He's still looking for holiness. Holiness has to do with a lifestyle. Yeah. Holiness is not something that you can dress up on a Sunday morning and present it to God and say, I'm holy. God said, no, this has to be an everyday mission, an everyday assignment, an everyday thought process regarding your lifestyle when it comes to the relationship that you have with me. Your calling is important. See, I think one of the issues is many times when we do not understand that we've been called. First of all, I need to understand the call of the one that has called me. If Christ calls me, I need to understand, okay, who is it that called me? Who is this mystery man? I might need to seek out and find out some things about this one that's calling me first before I can understand anything about the call. Because when you start understanding who he is and understand how powerful he is, then I want to understand, let me see here, what have you called me to? Because when I start understanding that I've been called, you know, a lot of y'all basketball players, you love King James, right? That plays for the who? But anyway. <laughs> when they selected him and they start paying him those digits, he knew that he had to perform not on based on his level, because we have given you all this, you need to play at this level. Many are called, some are cut, but some are chosen. Are, are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Many folk in Christ have been called, many have been cut, but then there are others that have been chosen. So with that being the case, we have to make a decision. Because he's called you, no doubt. You've been called. Amen. But with that calling, the question is, are you going to allow yourself to be cut because you don't want to meet the maker's match for your life? Because we have to match up. If the maker had given us what he wants for us, then I, I can't say, well, I can't do that. No, you can do all things to Christ that strengthen you. What I want you to be. That might mean me getting uncomfortable, though, the Lord. That might mean I need to give up some stuff. I understand this calling thing. I, I know what you did to Jeremiah. I know what you did to Ezekiel and all those guys, but that might have to give up some stuff. I'm not ready to give up. Well, you want to be comfortable in that area, but not comfortable in your calling? I might have to cut you then. All right, all right. All right. Saul? Yes. He made Saul the king of Israel, but because Saul did not honor his lifestyle after the order of God for his life, he cut him. Did he cut Judas? 
Judas, you going to betray Christ? Well, I got to cut you. As a matter of fact, it's going to be real hard for you. You're going to hang your own self. Because you're not completely comfortable in your calling. Look what he says in 2 Peter 1, verse 10 and verse 11. 2 Peter 1, verse 10 and verse 11 says, Therefore, my brethren and sisters, or brothers and sisters, make every effort to confirm your calling and election. But if you do these things, you will never stumble. And if you receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, or, and you will receive, rather, a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Somebody say, confirm your calling. Confirm your calling. Say it again, confirm your calling. Confirming your calling has to do with you, I mean, putting that seal of approval on it. He called me, now I'm going to confirm it. Yeah. I'm going to make sure everyone around me knows that my calling and the election that God has called me with is a sure fit. Yeah. In other words, you're not going to, stay with me now, you're not going to go against the calling of God for your life. He called you to this. He called you to this. He called you into Christianity. He called you to walk in the light as he is in the light. He called you into these things. He called you to, to walk according to the straight and the narrow and not be on over here and over there. He called you to these things. It's okay. Somebody inhale. Exhale. It's okay. It really is. See, people think that, man, this thing called Christianity is so hard, you can make it hard. Yes. It's not that hard. No. It's only about submission. Yes. Allowing him to be the Lord and you being the one underneath the Lord. Yes. It's really not that hard. Because really and truly, we do have power yes. over the works of the enemy. We do. But you have to confirm your calling. Sometimes they say confirm your calling. Confirm your calling. Make it evident. Make it plain. Make people, help people to see that, listen, I've been saved. Yes. I'm, 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 I'm full of the Holy Ghost. I'm walking in the light. I love my life. Yes. You want to find comfort in a distressing situation? Stay with Christ. Oh, yeah. 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 Stay with him. In this world, you're going to have tribulation. You're going to have some trials. Stay with him. It's about your calling. It's like, do you really treasure what he did? Because it has to come to that point where you decide, you know, I treasure you, Christ. Now, thank you for going to the cross of Calvary for my sins. And because of what you did, I want to give my life to you. Yeah. I want to show you that, you know, when you didn't make a mistake when you selected me, I thank you, Lord. Yeah. I bless you, Jesus. Yeah. I give you glory for calling me out of darkness into his heart. I really appreciate it. Yeah. 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 But see, if you're, it's like children, parents have kids, and then after a while, the kids get grown. Well, they, their mom and dad took care of them all. Well, I don't need that anymore. I don't need to abide by that any longer. Baby, let me tell you something. You got to confirm the calling. You got to be excited about your calling. You know how many people decide that they are not going to do God's will? In other words, they won't walk out of their calling? When you walk out of your calling, you're walking out into some dangerous that's true. And so many people don't understand why they are going through the things that they're dealing with. Some of you don't like the calling. Look what he told the Israelites. He said, look, your heart say one thing. With your mouth, you're saying something else. You honor me with your mouth and your heart is... Wait a minute. Jesus said you can 
cannot separate a man from his heart. You can't do it. Come on now, because that person's actions are based upon the issues of his heart. Yes, yes. 2 Peter 1, verse 10, it says again, Wherefore, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and your election sure. Make it sure. Tell somebody to make it sure. Make it sure. Amen. Look what happened in Matthew 10, verse 1. I'm going to move on. Matthew 10, verse 1. The scripture says, And when he called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. When he called him. Someone say, when he called him. They, had, they didn't have this power until they were what? Called. Prior to them having been called, they had no power against unclean spirits. They had no power against uh, you know, sickness. They had no power against disease. It was not until they were called. That's when God gives you the power. Yes. However, when you receive God's power, it's at that time that you need to what? activate the power. But first of all, you got to recognize you've been what? Called. You gotta become real comfortable. Find comfort in your calling. Now, in the case with these guys here, they were going to engage in people's lives. Because whenever God calls you, He calls you so you can engage with people. You're gonna go against some people that have sicknesses. You're gonna go up against people that have diseases. You're going to go up against people that have all manner of demonic influences in their lives. Now, you've been called to deal with that. Now, watch this. Here's the issue. Because, because of the fact that you need to be real comfortable in your calling, somebody that you're dealing with is not going to be comfortable with you coming to them to deal with them regarding the issue that's going on in it. But you've been called. Are y'all hearing me? Yes, sir. And so you've got to find your level of comfort in your calling, not in anything else, because everybody's not going to buy into your calling. Are y'all understanding me, what I'm saying? And see, because a lot of people aren't comfortable in their calling, they don't want to walk in or walk out their calling. Because I don't want people to not like me. I don't want people to think that I'm just me. I don't want people to think that I'm going to get. No, God said, you are the one that has to give me Employed. How many of y'all have 
have a job in here? You 18, you 18 and over, you have a job. You can own your own business. Even if you own a business, you have a responsibility to your clients. When you've been selected to and given a job, you have a responsibility by your employer. You've been called and assigned to this particular task, and so we need you to, to be here, not being slow. You see, most of y'all, most, most folks, because they, they, they attach the dollar bill to the work. You, you go, oh, you're going to get to work. But see, they don't, they don't, they, when it comes to the things of God, they don't attach eternal life yes. to the work that they do here on the earth. That's why it says, yes. if any man put his hand to the plow looking back, I got to cut you. You're not fit for the kingdom of God. Number two, we have to find our comfort in our, somebody say, new conversation. Because we've been children. Colossians 4, verse number 6 says, Let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. See, when you start walking in your calling, you start learning, somebody say, communication skills. When you start walking in your calling, and you allow Christ Jesus to be the guide of your life, you will begin learning communication skills. The best communicator of all conversations is Jesus Christ, the one that wrote this book. You will learn how to be, I mean, really be a good communicator. Why? Because that's what he's about. He's about community. He's about conversation. He's about articulating himself properly before people. Let your conversations be seasoned with salt. Don't pour pepper on the conversation. Let it be seasoned. Because salt brings in the relationship this additive that makes you want more of it. And that's why a lot of times when it comes to our conversations, we're not, man, I, I'm going to let you know how I feel. Now listen here, there were times and seasons for every purpose under the heaven, a time to make war and a time, as the Solomon said, to refrain yeah. from having that war. And another thing is, listen here, when we're, when we're communicating on behalf of God, that's not the time for you to be concerned about yourself. Because what his mission is, his assignment is, go into the world, teach them, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, making disciples out of them. It's about him using you to help somebody else to become a disciple. All right, all right. Yes. You gotta get yourself out of the way when it comes to that. <laughs> because he's really concerned if you're already a disciple of Christ, he's really concerned about those that are not disciples of Christ. Because you're a disciple of somebody. You are a disciple of somebody or something. Every last one of us. Something is driving our mentality. Something is shaping the way in which we think, the philosophies of our lives. Every single day. Is it Christ? Is it his word? Or is it the world? Is it the, word, the ways of the world? So your, your conversation, here it is again. When it comes to you and I being comforted by our conversation, using that word to bring about grace in somebody else's life, don't be all, man, you mean he's going to send me on the front line? Somebody needs to go. Somebody need to get to a point in their lives where, you know what, I'm not concerned about what they think about me. I'm concerned about how I can connect with them so they can have a better life in Christ Jesus. Because you know what? At the end of the day, I found out that I'm going to return to the dust. I thought you, man, I, I, I thought I looked pretty good. 
No, you're going to return to the dust. Yes. Come on now, say that. Okay. You will return to the dust. <laughs> From the dust you came, you go back to dirt. We got to find comfort in our convictions. Are you really sold out? In Joshua 14, verse number 6 to verse number 9, the scripture says, Now the people of Judah approached Joshua at Gilgal, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, said to him, You know what the Lord said to Moses, the man of God at Kadesh Barnea, about you and me? I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to explore the land. And I brought him back a report according to my convictions. Verse 8 said, But my fellow Israelites who went up with me made the hearts of the people melt for fear. I, however, fought the Lord my God wholeheartedly. So on that day, Moses swore to me, the land on which your feet have walked will be your inheritance and that your children forever. Why? Because you have followed the Lord my God wholeheartedly. Many of y'all know this area of scripture. Moses had actually called some spies according to King James and said they were spies. He told them to go and spy out the land. God had already given them the land. Somebody say God had already given them the land. God had already made up in his mind what he was going to do on behalf of the people of God. And all God told Moses was to get me some spies and have those same men that you select to go and spy out the land. Now, when those men went over there and they spied out the land, the Bible said that many of them came back, somebody said, with an evil report. When those same men saw what God wanted them to have, they still had an evil report because they were not convicted over it. And so oftentimes in your life and in my life inclusive, many times when God tells us exactly what we can have based on the fact that we follow him to the T, we decide that we're not going to follow him and because of this we never receive what it is he wants us to receive. We're not convicted over it enough. Even when it comes to our eternal destination, because we're not convicted over the fact that Jesus says, listen here, if you give yourself to me today, tomorrow you will be in paradise with me. We're not convicted over it enough. Amen, over it enough. And here these spies are, they go out there, they see what God wants them to have. It looks good. There are grapes over there. There are pomegranates over there. It is a land flowing with milk and honey. We see what God wants us to have. And then here it is, praise the Lord. Here these men come back to the congregation of God and give the people of God not what God wanted them to see, but give the people of God a version of what they wanted them to see. Dangerous. Anytime we put before people other anything that God does not want them to see and we make that the law, then we are not only mess up our blessing, but we are mess up the blessing of those should come behind us. We're not convicted enough. We think we can just take it and leave it. It's going to be okay anyway. No, it is not. Joshua, Caleb, you two are the only guys that's going to enter into this land of promise. The rest of them, I got to cut them off. And many people don't understand why God is just saying, well, you know what? Hey, you got it. You run your own deal. Come on. I'm closing. You got this show under, you know, under control. Go ahead on. I want you to do certain things because I'm really concerned about the offspring. God said, only you two, Joshua and Caleb, you're the only guys. Moses said, because of the fact that you are, listen, and you are convicted, you will be able to go in. But the rest of them, I chose him. I called him. Uh -huh. But they didn't find comfort in it. Let me tell you what, church. 
I think a lot of us in here, if you've lived any length of time, you, you've accumulated a few nice things in this life. Nice house, probably driving a decent car, nice car, probably got a decent wardrobe. Because I'm going to be honest with you, at, at the end of the day, I look around, I tell you the truth, I say, man, how many pair of shoes can I buy? All right. Now, I sure would love to have a little bit more money because I do more kingdom business with that. Amen. My house, in my opinion, is nice enough. I don't need another house. When the dust really, really settles down? Church, as I close, in this life, you shall. That means me, you, all of us in here, you shall have tribulation. If we're going to find any consolation, it's going to be in Christ Jesus. Find comfort in your calling because you've been chosen. Amen.